Hey, my name is Abe, and today what I'm going to do is show you my .spacemax file. If you're new and beginning to work with SpaceMax and you're just unsure what's going on, uh, this video may help and just kind of give you an idea of how to customize things and load things and work around when things break because one of the things with SpaceMax and uh, these packages and things that I'm finding out is um, you're going to just have to tinker with things till they work. And to me, it doesn't bother me too much. But it takes time and here's some shortcuts that I've used and just some techniques that I've used. And I'll have some timestamps if you want to give into different sections of my dot space max files just to kind of look at some things. When it loads up like this, here you're greeted with some things. And just some quick house rules here. These lines here that are dimmed with the two semicolons in front of it means it's commented out. In other words, it's an inactive. It's not going to change anything. You can add text all day and it doesn't matter. But if it's highlighted or, you know, white in this case, don't mess with it unless you know what you're doing or you're willing to deal with the consequences like I do. Now, two quick rules before we jump into this. Number one, and let me just scroll down to the place where I just want to begin because all this stuff I don't really mess with, but the configuration layers is where I do mess with. The rule number one is do not delete um, anything inside your space max unless like you're just trying to clean some things up that you haven't used in a while. The first stage, if you're not going to use something, let's say, for instance, I don't want to use Helm because I'm crazy. Um, I would just add a semicolon or two semicolons as like standard practice here from and it would comment it out. Now Helm is no longer going to load, which would give me lots of problems, but Helm would no longer load. Do that first. Don't just delete it. So um, that's what I consider. And you notice how here at least you have your some things already commented out for you. And uh, I use was using L feed. I want to use it again or L feed. Um, that just is an RSS feed inside of Emacs because Emacs can do everything. Um, the one that I've added, Deft, and that is a way to organize your notes. And it's a really nice way to organize your notes. But on top of that, I have Org Roam, which organizes your notes even better. Now we come down to this section here, which is your additional packages. When you install a package inside of SpaceMax, you're going to have to add that package either right here or if it's like a layer, you're going to have to add it back up here. Because if you don't, the next time you restart SpaceMax, it's just going to delete it. That's something I had to work through in the beginning. But what's nice about that is if you needed to delete several things at the same time, you don't have to find some crazy way to delete a bunch of different things. You could just comment these out, like I would assume, because I'm not using Centaur tabs or Cynosaurus. Then that no longer works. But in the beginning, if you're installing a package and it keeps deleting, you're like, why is it keeping, why is it deleting? Add it here and if it doesn't, and well, read the docs, but make sure you add it here. And if it's not working here, add it up here. Like I was adding deft for a while to down here and I'm like, why isn't deft working? The reason why is because it's an actual configuration layer, not an additional package. But most of the time, whatever you're going to load is a an additional package so let me walk through some of these packages that i use that i'm using and, and they're great um, number one uh write room i actually don't use this very much and i could probably comment it out but if you're writing just a single file and you want a nice uh easy simple looking uh screen to write on write room makes a nice distraction free mode it get rid it gets rid of uh uh, all the distraction bits and it makes it full screen so it's a nice way to write. DTK is a wonderful package that I use a lot uh, that uh, inserts scripture. Well, there's a couple of things. One, you can just uh, open up different books of the Bible with it. Uh, two, I think it actually makes an entire org Bible for you. For you. I don't really use that because it's a little clunky. But if you are inserting scripture, as I do when I'm writing, because I use a lot to write um, religious articles and write about Christianity and I preach a lot, so that sort of thing. DDK is wonderful for adding uh, versions of the Bible and uh, just, you know, typing out a reference and adding it in. Oxpandoc is your wonderful tool that changes any file into any file. I really like that because um, I do spend some time converting files to different places. Orgref is a package that allows you to um, 
manage your references uh, very easily. I have not dived deep into this. I want to, and I want to learn how to use it. So it's in here in hopes that someday I'll spend some time learning how to use it. <laughs> Command log is the one that I use when I'm demoing Emacs. I'm not using it on this one because uh, just want a, a little bit cleaner setup here. But when I'm demoing Emacs, um, you can see what kind of keystrokes that I'm using. And I like that right there. Org Noter is a quick one that um, allows you to take notes when you're working within a file or an EPUB or a PDF. And it's a very nice, simple package of taking notes while you're reading. Ranger is what I use when I'm trying to edit a bunch of files at the same time or look at my files. And uh, I don't use it to find files all that much, although I probably should. But Ranger is its own standalone program, but it's inside of Emacs, as all things should become. Olivetti is a program that I use when I'm using with our uh, package that I'm using when I write uh, when I write with org mode and it just makes things look nice and pretty. Minimal theme is a package. There's a theme list that I use when I am uh, messing with, well, when I'm demoing Emacs or using Emacs in like a classroom situation where the projector that I'm projecting on looks, it's like a really bad projector. It just makes your fonts either white to black or black to white and it's very minimal. So it looks good with a low uh, contrast projector. So I use that there. I believe what this does org uh, helm org rifle is it allows me to sort my headings where i want to sort them so i don't have to copy and paste or yank and kill and, and put them other or kill and yank and um to put them over, uh, all across my files it just shoots them over there quickly groove box is a theme that i'm using and it actually does not load well in space max i don't know why that is but i have a workaround that i'll show you when we get to the user config stuff uh, Doom themes, also some great themes. I don't really use them all that much. I like the Grovebox Dark theme the best, but I do like Doom 1. I do like that a lot. Zettle Deft is the program that I'm using when I'm organizing my notes and finding notes. It's a good one at finding notes. Nov or nov.el novel allows you to read EPUB files, which are, um, uh, you know, digital book files in Emacs. And it's awesome and I highly recommend it. Uh, these two here work together where in org mode you can use a different font. Then I do it. So it's not a mono space font like this is a font here, this Noto mono space font. It is a variable pitch font, like a normal font you would not use when you're coding. So I use MFL English or Great Primer. Those are the two ones that I'll use with. And then mixed pitch allows you to use two different fonts inside of your org mode. So my line number or my verse is for when I'm studying scripture. It is uh, one font and then the rest of the text is another and that just helps it look uh, easier on the eyes because it aligns better. That's the benefit of having a monospace font, but um, you also like the look of um, a variable font pitch. Since our tabs, I don't use those. They just add tabs to Space Max or Emacs. A presentation just blows up your screen. I don't really use it much. Easy Jekyll, uh, Easy Jekyll, something else I want to dive deep into, but I haven't yet. And what that does is it helps you to manage a blog that you, uh, a Jekyll blog, uh, easy enough on that. Now I haven't uh, messed with that yet. I want to, and I want to see if that works. I have a feeling that there is some package or some combination of packages that you can use to easily handle a Jekyll uh, website, static website. Cynosaurus, I don't know how this one works. I think it's being updated, but maybe it is. And it just is a way to use for a thesaurus. So if you find yourself using the same word, it'll just show you, hey, here's a bunch of other words that are like that, but not the same word. All right, let's uh, scan through this. Some of these things are nice. And uh, be sure if you're beginning to use Space Max, just read a lot of these things here because it tells you uh, what it is and it's well uh, it, it just explains things very well, so I like that. Now, um, Space Max themes, if you want your themes to where you don't have to cycle through them, I believe there's a way to just cycle themes with some key bindings. I forget what those are because they don't really mess with my themes much, but you can find them if you'd like. And what this does is it shows you which theme you want to load first. Now, I load Doom, Doom 1 first, and I'll tell you why, because if I load a Groovebox theme, if I do Groovebox hard or, or soft or whatever it is, light, dark, it, it's always going to just say, nope, didn't do it right. And it doesn't work, but I'll show you how I fix that. But Doom 1 is still a really great one. Now, here's my font settings. I'm using Noto Mono, which is just a uh, simple, nice open source font and other things that I don't like to mess with because I don't know uh, what they're for or why I would need them. Uh, but the it'll tell you what they are there. All right, let's... 
go to my user config section. What this section does is it shows you all of your packages. They have all of these different options and Emacs has so many different configurations as why you're using Emacs most likely because you like to customize things. And this is the place where you spend to customize certain things like your, you know, Zettle def to, to customize some things there, or just, you know, this first one here, and we'll just kind of go through these now, is you customize things like, if you notice here with my uh, screen, it is the uh, Emacs is actually semi-transparent. And the reason why I do that is, is with these two lines here. And remember, all of my files, uh, all this is in my GitHub page. I'll link that in the description if you'd like to just kind of look at those things. This is nice. So I'll just kind of fly through these. Global, this, or sorry, org indent mode. It's, this is just some key bindings to add org indent mode to some quick keys here. Although this computer, for some reason, or this keyboard, the uh, super key does not work. But what this does is so super I enables org indent mode. And that helps things look really nice whenever I am doing some, you know, lots of high, you know, lots of hierarchical outlines in org mode. And uh, org indent is supposed to make it look nice with some nice spacing between the different lines and the different tab, you know, tabbing things out to where it looks nice. But the problem is it breaks pretty quickly. So if you toggle it on and off as you're writing, you know, every once in a while, it fixes it and uh, you can go back to writing. So I really like that feature. Uh, for org bullets, and so what I've done too, and it's a good practice as well, is just comment these things out in a way that you can understand them. So for org bullets, I already know what this does. This caches all of your bullets whenever you're using some fancy org bullets. I don't use bullets anymore. I uh, actually have a space for my uh, org bullet. Uh, it looks a little bit nicer to me that way. And what this does is it caches those. It kind of preloads them so that way it doesn't take forever to go from a second level heading to a third level heading for the first time because it has to reload everything. This is some silly stuff I think I had whenever I was trying to figure out how to make Emacs run faster. My startup time was like sometimes 20 seconds to 30 seconds but I was running on Windows and I fixed all that as of late because I'm using Linux now. Uh, org refile, so this helps to, org refile is a cool thing that allows you to shift heading to a different section of your org file quickly. So instead of you know scrolling up and down and messing with it, you can just use, hit a couple of bug buttons to hit the org refile and just flies it up or flies it down wherever you want it to go. And this allows you to go beyond filing it to just beyond level one. It defaults only to do it on level one headings you can refile it to. So I like that. This is a really, really nice thing I found on the internet somewhere to create numbered lists to files. And so what this does, so you're right here, you highlight a text and then you hit command um, like equal sign. And notice that, see how it's all numbered? That's this right here. And so what I did with that was that I found some plain text version of the Bible, but it had no verses. So I added my verses because each line had its own verse. And so I added all the verses to all the chapters of the Bible using some pretty cool macros. I'll probably make a video or a series of videos on how I did that because I think there's some really cool things inside of Emacs that would save you weeks of time. Add that. So I like that little uh, function there. So there it is. And uh, if you wanna, again, all this is in my uh, GitHub file. Now, here are some hook modes. And what these do is, is that whenever you call up org mode, it is going to always call up or enable visual line mode. A lot of what I do in this section is just making things look nice. Olivetti mode, I already showed you that. That automatically, every time I do an org file, it's an Olivetti mode, so it, it beautifies it, makes it look a little bit nicer and cleaner. Uh, and it makes it look like I can use different uh, fonts in there, so my variable pitch font is, is in there. Also, it automatically calls up org indent mode. Um, and uh, same thing with the markdown file. And these here, uh, well, back when I was using Alfie, it would also make that nice too. This is some stuff for Centaur, although I could just uh, comment these out because I'm not using Centaur tabs right now. And then we get to Zettledef. Now, I know that for me at least, it took a while to get Zettledef to actually work. I was trying to figure out how to get it to work. If you go back up here in the docs at least, it says, or at least I think it says, to add this to your docs. And when you add this, it is gonna just automatically add 
Zettle def do your thing. Now maybe problem is, is I'm adding it here, but I've spent a couple of hours just trying to get Zettle def to work on my computer. Originally, <laughs> I uh, this was like a crazy move, but I just copied and pasted the entire Zettle def .el file into my user config section. And so this was like a massively long file because it added all of those different packages from Zettle def. Now what I've done is instead is I just have load file and what this does is it loads this zettledef.el. I used to copy and paste this entire file into it but no longer. Load file, throw that in there. That's what I've done. The drawback is is that every time I update my zettledef uh, package I have to re-add this because these uh, numbers, because the versions, change. Someday I'll figure out a better way to do that but that's what I do now. And then for org roam, you also want to add this to your user config file as well. Now, here's some extra things for your Zettle Deft file. I believe what these are for is when you add or when you uh, open up a um, new file, it um, allows you to open it up into a different window on a different section. So there's just some customization things as well. This actually really shouldn't be here. This is some extra stuff and see, I I've messed. This is diff This is some different stuff here. Oh, this is probably giving me some serious problems. All right, well, I'm gonna fix this. So don't, don't use this here. I don't know what this is, but well, I'll fix this later. This removes, this is all in these little uh, docs, but what this does is it removes all the uh, silly stuff in the beginning of your folder. So like the title and stuff, it just gives gets you to the text inside the preview of the Zettledef. So like if you were to open up Zettledef as I'm about or deft as I'm about to do um, what this does to remove the title which is cool and that's what it's for so if I didn't have this the, all this stuff would be populated with a bunch of like the title and other such things but it doesn't so I like that this is my section where I have my different space max key bindings and if you're somebody who's using space max I like these key bindings there's another list of key bindings that are out there on the zettle deft uh, file there if you want to use those as well so go ahead and use those. And then this was a, uh, funnily enough, I was, uh, I, I recorded my video on Zettledeft and the creator of Zettledeft saw my particular predicament in using org link instead of Zettledeft link. And he created this piece of code that uh, is very nice. Oops. Uh, it's a very nice piece of code that I've uh, watched my Zettledeft video. It'll kind of uh, my Zettel Left again video to show you how that one works and I really like it. last one here or yeah the last two here here's the first one is this is how I make sure that whenever I load up my Zettel my uh, Emacs it loads the Groovebox dark hard mode instead of doing it all the way up here because going back up to my themes here if I were to put that same file here when I would load Emacs it just it wouldn't do it so I changed it to where if you hit load theme there you're fine you're okay now this is the last one that I use for the command log. Whenever I'm messing with command log, there's certain you know functions I'm using that I don't want it to include. So for instance, evil line next, that's just the uh, you know JK kind of moving or backward and forward moving stuff. You don't want to add that or have that on the list of things because um, it just will just clog up and make it hard to read everything else. Too much information at once. All right, so here's the last bit of things in my file that I don't actually go in and mess with these on their own. I'll probably do a separate video on this uh, customize set variables because this is a safe way of editing your spacemax dot spacemax stuff without messing things up. And the way you do this is you go to custom, oops custom group and then you just go to whatever thing you want to mess with so let's say you wanted to change how your org mode faces look well you just hit org face and here you are and instead of instead of going so for instance here's where these are like uh yeah org level instead of like writing this out um, you can do it in a more graphical way, which is nice when you're starting out and uh, it does it for you. So it'll add that. Now, the problem is if you add this here and then you come back up and add something, um, I think this gets priority over this. So be careful. And I wouldn't edit this by hand. I mean, I think you can, but I would uh, just edit those through the customized group thing. That's really nice. It's something that I use uh, still because... I just don't trust myself to write the right kind of code to get the thing that I want. And there's sometimes I'll see options that I didn't know that were options. So customized groups is a really good thing. I'll probably 
throw a video down about that. But that is the overall of my dot space max file here. And I think this is going to help those who are learning how to use space max. So thank you very much for watching. And um, if you like this video, like it. Really, thank you so much for watching. I really love enjoying these videos. And so if you want more videos on this, or well, really just, uh, I'm using this to study the Bible and to teach the Bible, but similar things like that, go ahead and uh, like this video and uh, subscribe. So thank you, and I'll see you guys in the next video.